Everything on top of this desk, including the custom-built gaming PC, cost me about 750 bucks. So if you're jumping into the world of PC gaming starting from scratch, this is definitely the video to watch and copy for yourself. This PC is a beast and plays absolutely any game in 1080p with some pretty impressive settings and FPS numbers. And I also specifically saved extra peripheral money so that we don't have to deal with cheapo products. So we ended up with some absolute bangers here. We'll start with those peripherals and then work our way to the PC. And the first one we got here is the keyboard and I'm highlighting this first because it completely changed my perspective on the keyboard hobby. This is a 100% stock Techware Phantom rocking their own pink switches and these are exactly why my perspective has changed. This is a linear and creamy pre lube switch and after all of the years I've reviewed keyboards, this is the absolute best sounding and feeling one that I've ever used. Before owning this keyboard, I wasn't aware that a keyboard switch could scratch an itch in my brain, but that's exactly what it feels like and it's just so satisfying to use on a daily basis. I actually daily drove all of these peripherals for about a week before making this video just to make sure I got dialed in and gave you my proper review and thoughts. And I'm not kidding, this keyboard changed my life. I now fully grasp the reason why people go down this custom keyboard rabbit hole. So take this as a warning because it may cause you to spend even more keyboard money in the future. This Techware Phantom rocks lubed V3 stabilizers, multi-layered foam padding for sound dampening, a dual layered fiberglass PCB, and also double shot, double walled ABS keycaps. This all equates to some incredible value and sound for the $60 price tag. And there's a very real chance it doesn't get better than this at this price point. The only thing I personally don't like about it is the lack of volume knob. I'm the type of person that needs this on every keyboard, but it does have a keyboard shortcut with the function key, which gets the job done. I'll have a link to where you can buy this along with everything else I'm talking about today down in the description. Well, what's also down in the description is today's video sponsor, GVG Mall. I know you've heard me say this a bunch of times already, but the reason GVG Mall keeps sponsoring these videos is because a bunch of you guys and I keep buying their keys. It's plain and simple. They have the best prices on Microsoft Office keys, other software, games, and even some console stuff as well. More importantly though, is that they have the gold mine for cheap Windows activation keys and the process couldn't be any easier. Now, these prices on their website look great already, but the true magic is when you use code ZTT18 because that'll give you a beefy 25% percent discount. They'll then instantly send you the key. You paste that into your Windows activation setting and then boom, you get full access to Windows. You remove that nasty watermark and you'll get every update that's available. I wouldn't be showing this to you if it didn't work. So head on down in the description and use code ZTT18 if you need to pick up a key for way cheaper than the normal price. Another product that gets the job done is this KTC H24T09P monitor. And if you're hunting for a less than $100 1080p higher refresh rate monitor, you'll quickly discover that there are a lot of options and it's somewhat overwhelming. Now, I definitely haven't tested all of these for myself yet, but as a normal shopping consumer, this is the one that looked the best to me after some extensive research. This is a 24 inch 1080p IPS 165 Hertz panel and KTC is a brand that I do actually trust. Lots of these sub $100 monitors were from monitor brands that I've never even heard of, but KCT actually sent me out an OLED earlier this year, which was like seven times the price of this one, but they gained my trust by how good that monitor performed. They simply make good products and this one at the budget end of things is no exception. I believe I sniped this on a lightning deal down to $93, but I don't think that saved a ton of money. So you should be able to grab it for around that same price. This monitor rocks some pretty solid colors right out of the box. I personally didn't notice any lag or anything, but I'm of course just a 32 year old gamer dad. And overall, I think it's rocking great value for the price. It's also highly reviewed on Amazon. So I'm definitely not alone in that opinion. Moving through our peripheral list, here's the audio solution. And for the first time ever in my budget setup guy videos, I'm actually not going with a traditional gaming headset. Over the past six months or so, I've fully jumped into the IEM gaming world. And honestly, it's tough to use anything else at this point. This is the Truth Ear Critical Zero Reds. And this is unanimously one of the best sets of IEMs that you can buy around a $50 price range. At least that's what the audiophiles say. I'm not good enough to actually be part of those conversations. I have seen that more of those people prefer the sound of the blue versions a bit better. But since I already had those, and I love them by the way, I wanted to try something else and bonus points because it matches the red and black setup. This red version version actually comes with a little bass boost attachment if that's your type of thing. But overall, the gaming experience with these is just so much better than what you'll find at this price point with a traditional headset. The quality of the sound you hear for things like footsteps and anything directional based is crystal clear. And it definitely does provide you with an advantage in the competitive scene. I also just like them because music sounds fantastic on here as well. It sounds like the Red Hot Chili Peppers are playing right next to me in the studio. There are two downsides to this, however, though. And the first one is obviously no microphone. That's not a big 
deal for someone like me because I almost never actually squat up with people because gaming is usually a solo, relax at the end of day type of activity for me, but that could be a deal breaker to some of you. You could of course just buy a desktop USB microphone to go along with this, and they also make IEM microphone cables that could plug into these if you wanted to. I haven't tried them for myself though, but I definitely should so I become familiar with them at some point. The other downside is that the stock cable isn't super long, but just like the IEM microphone cable, you can just detach this stock cable and buy a longer one if you need it. Most of these IEMs are a standard two-prong connection, so you can buy different cables for them, which is pretty neat. But yeah, if you haven't tried gaming with IEMs, I definitely think you should at least give it a try at some point. The only warning is that it could completely ruin gaming headsets or definitely desktop speakers for you in the future. Next up, we have what I would consider another top-tier banger peripheral choice, and this is the Attack Shark X3 Lightweight. If you're not into the peripheral scene, there's a good chance you think that this is just a no-name, off-brand making budget products, but after a quick YouTube search, you'll see that the peripheral creators actually talk a lot about this one. This X3 is essentially a Logitech Pro super light knockoff, but it actually pulls that mission off entirely, and it's really good. The sensor is a Pixar PAW3395, and it comes in at 49 grams, and let me tell you, this feels almost identical to a super light. I definitely recommend checking out Consumer Tech Review's video of his top five gaming mice, because he goes a bit more in depth on that if you're interested. But yeah, the X3 also comes in different colors, and I love this mouse so much now that I feel the urge to just buy multiple colors, so I have them over the next few years in case the product goes out of stock or I break one of them. The accuracy when gaming just feels incredible. It's super lightweight, and the only downfall I discovered is that the skates are probably where they cheaped out a little bit. On a slow-moving mouse pad like my Daily Driver Artisan FX0 Extra Soft, they feel perfectly fine, but on a faster mouse pad, it doesn't feel that great. Unfortunately, that's exactly what I bought for today's setup, as this is the Fnatic Dash, and a lot of people like this if you are looking for one of those faster pads. Compared to my FX0, I can whip the mouse across this thing way quicker, but there's less stopping power and grip, so my accuracy tanks with this combination. You can fix this by either buying a slower pad, or you can replace the skates on the X3, which is what I saw a lot of other people do. Either way, I don't think the dash is a bad pad or anything. I've just discovered during this process that I'm a slow mouse pad kind of guy. I don't need the speed for quick 360 flicks because I'm definitely not that type of gamer. And finally, here is the custom gaming PC, and if you're following every ZTT long form video, this one should look familiar to you. A couple of weeks ago, I uploaded a full video walking you through every part in here and how you can copy it for yourself, and I'll have a link to that in the upper right hand corner as well as the description. For some cliff notes, this is a combination of new and used parts, and unfortunately, it's not a quick build that you can just buy straight off of Amazon or something. Well, we will be selling this on zttbuilds.com slash drops during Black Friday, but that's just for one lucky person. Every other product that we talked about is available today, and you can probably get it shipped to your house in a day or two, but for a build like this, you're gonna have to work for it a little bit more. The CPU and GPU combination I used is a brand new Ryzen 5 5500 and a used Power Color Red Devil RX 5700 XT. If you're out of the loop, the 5700 XT competes directly with Nvidia's RTX 3060 at about half the cost, so this can play pretty much any game around 1080p high or ultra level of settings. Here's the full parts list of everything inside the build, but again, I would recommend watching that full video if you want to build this for yourself. All in all, here's everything inside the setup guide and the price that I paid for everything. My total cost came out just a bit over our $750 target price, but I think it's by a fair amount. You can definitely copy all of this for yourself and possibly pay even less than what I did with some good deals, and realistically, it'll be pretty tough to beat this combination in terms of price to performance for both the build and the peripherals. Usually with this type of total budget, I would have elected to spend about $550 to $600 on the build and then buy some cheaper peripherals, but this time I saved more money for them and I'm really happy with this result. At the end of the day, PC gaming isn't just about getting the most FPS as possible, but the entire setup comes into play, and these peripherals are how you interact with your PC and the game that you're playing. If you've ever tried running a competitive first-person shooter with a $20 knockoff mouse, then you'll know the struggle, so spending more money and getting dialed in on the peripherals is a way more fun experience in my opinion. But yeah, be sure to let me know what other peripherals I should check out for my next setup guide, or if you have any additional thoughts on what I picked, and the link for that full video about the custom gaming PC is on the screen for you right now.